Hello, all lovers of liberty. Uh, tonight is uh, Self-Evident Truth with the Grumpy Old Vet, me, episode number seven. This one could be a little bit long. It's going to be some history. It's going to be some history of the, of the Sheriff's Department. Um, <clears throat> now, we're going to start out in 2012. And then uh, from 2012, we're going to jump back to the year 2000. And then we're going to come all the way up to present. So this could be uh, a little bit of a ride. And uh, just stay with me. It's going to be a little bit of a, of a long uh, episode here. But let's start out in 2012. In 2012, uh, there was three people running for, for office. Um, I put my paperwork in first. Uh, Stan Burkhart said that he wasn't going to run anymore. And uh, so I put my paperwork in. Uh, Scott Hotshare put his paperwork in. And then, lo and behold, the... Uh, the uh, Sheriff decided to run again. Now, what we have to do is we have to go back to 2010. In 2010, um, there was a shift in undersheriffs. Okay, uh, J.J. Hodshire, who was the undersheriff, uh, then went to the hospital, and uh, Bill Worley, who was the underchief uh, of the city, came over as the undersheriff. So, in 2012, let's explain what happened in 2012 first. In 2012, J.J. Hodshire was Burkhart's campaign manager. He was also Val White's campaign manager. Val White, if you remember, was the assistant prosecuting attorney in Neil Brady's office, and she was running for probate judge. So J.J. Hodshire was the campaign manager for both of them. Uh, so uh, the three of us candidates running for sheriff Ran in the primary, and of course, uh, Stan Burkhart won. Now, at that time, um, uh, Scott was pretty friendly with me, and I was friendly with him. Um, I was, in fact, I was friendly with Sheriff Burkhart. And uh, so, anyway, Scott called me down to his house in Camden. I went down to his house in Camden. He's the one that let me know that his brother JJ was an illegal undersheriff for 10 years and um, told me the whole story. Of what went on. I won't get into all the specifics of that story that he told me then, but he was pretty upset. In fact, uh, JJ had become estranged with it from his whole family. Um, the only person he really got along with after that was his mother, as was reported to me, um, because all the brothers were a little bit upset that JJ backed Stan Burkhart rather than his brother Scott. And so they were estranged from that point on. And that's why Scott didn't have any problems uh, giving me all the information that JJ was an illegal undersheriff. So of course I went to Marty Cass's office and I filed some Freedom of Information Acts uh, and um, received certain paperwork. And uh, so the, the paperwork that I received is, uh, is uh, the first one here is, uh, let's say February. Now, this paper, and I'll try to put a copy of all these down below. This paper is uh, from the um, uh, Judicial Committee. And it says, we recommend that the Hillsdale County Board of Commissioners support the Hillsdale County Sheriff's appointment of a temporary administrative assistant until such time that a Hillsdale County undersheriff can be appointed. Because in 2000, the undersheriff um, sadly became sick and had to step down. And uh, so um, so Stan Burkhart um, hired J.J. Uh, Hodshire as an administrative assistant. Now this letter here is dated March 27, 2000. And this uh, was to Thomas Moore, Hillsdale County Clerk, Hillsdale County Courthouse. It says, Dear Tom, please be advised that Jeremiah Hodshire will be appointed to the position of administrative assistant pursuant to the county commissioner's order number 24. And that's what this is here. Commissioner's order number 24, where the commissioners approve the administrative assistant. His appointment will take effect on Monday, April 10th, 2000, which is the start of a new payroll period. His annual salary will be $38,000 
or $1,461.54 per pay, to be taken from the sheriff's account number 301.703.1. Jeremiah shall be afforded the same benefits that were entitled to the undersheriff in the past. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Now that was in March 27th of 2000. Okay. Now, in August 14th of 2000, another letter from the sheriff, said, Mr. Thomas Moore, Hillsdale County Clerk, First Floor Courthouse, Hillsdale, Michigan, 49242. Dear Tom, please be advised that Jeremiah J. Hodshire has fulfilled his requirements for the position of undersheriff as approved by myself for the Hillsdale County Sheriff's Department. His new rate of pay shall be $1,730 per pay period beginning August 14, 2000. His salary shall be paid from the sheriff's account number 101.301.704.1 coined quotation marks under sheriff's salary. Thank you for your courtesies and, co and cooperation in this, in this matter. Now it's odd, why would Sheriff Burkhart tell Tom Moore that Jeremiah J. Hotchair has fulfilled his requirements for the position of undersheriff as approved by Sheriff Burkhart. Because to be the undersheriff by statute in the state of Michigan requires that you have an M. Coles number. Now, M. Coles stands for Michigan Coalition on Law Enforcement Standards. Okay. And that's made up of a board of different people, and only that board can certify someone with an M. Coles number. Okay. And you have to have an M. Coles number to be under sheriff. So I got this little gem right here. And this is um, this is the appointment of under sheriff. It says name Jeremiah J. Hodshair and certified training M uh, the Malotzi, which is M-L-E-O-T-C, which was the board prior to uh, M. Coles. And uh, M, that, that was the, the board that certified uh, police officers and gave them their certification to be police officers. Um, so it was Malazzi before that. M. Coles. There is no Malazzi number. There is no M. Coles number. Because Jeremiah J. Hodshare never went through the academy and did not have an M. Coles or Malazzi number. Okay. So he was sworn in illegally as the undersheriff. Now, he had the approval of the Judicial Committee to make him the administrative assistant, but he did not have approval by statute to make him the undersheriff. Now, this was brought up to Jennifer Granholm at the time, who was Governor Granholm, and she said no. He cannot be undersheriff. And it was also brought up to the Michigan Sheriff's Association at that time. And they told Sheriff Burkhart, no, Jeremiah J. Hodshire cannot be the undersheriff because he doesn't have an M. Coles number. He does not have a police officer certification. Sheriff Burkhart decided to make him that anyway. Now, it's my supposition that the reason why we had to have the August letter is because Thomas Moore knew that it was illegal to swear him in as undersheriff. And so here, the sheriff took the heat so that Thomas Moore, the county clerk, could swear Jeremiah J. Hodgeary or J.J. Hodgeary in as undersheriff, but it was illegal. But they didn't think anybody would ever look in the book. They didn't think anybody would ever ask for that paperwork. So, out of all the Hodshire brothers, to my knowledge, the only one that had an M. Coles number was Mark. Mark was the only one that went through the academy. Mark uh, went up to the rank of uh, detective sergeant. And um, Mark currently is a police officer for Napoleon Township. Um, and he happens to be the, uh, I believe he's the school officer there and the kids love him. Um, now let's, uh, let's, let's go back to, to 2012. 
And so I find this information out. I get all this information. And I bring it up to the prosecuting attorney's office. And here's a letter from Val White. It says that basically they don't have any authority in any of that. Well, I thought they had authority for when I brought them evidence that someone had committed perjury and fraud. I thought the prosecuting attorney was supposed to take care of that. Obviously not. We don't, we don't go after white collar criminals. We don't go after those that are buddies with us in the criminal justice system. We don't, we only go after people um, that uh, like, like Anthony Hart, put him in prison for two years as an innocent man or Andy Feather. We go after him, destroy his life for eight years when he was an innocent man. We go after people like, oh, like Brian Jeffries, who didn't do anything wrong, but we destroy their life with prosecution. Or what about um, Esther Hirschberger that it had an arrest warrant out for her for having four dogs at large? She doesn't even own four dogs. See, this is the kind of serious crime we go for. Now, in checking this out, I found out um, the plan, and this is my belief of what the plan was from what I've gathered, was they were going to try to get uh, um, Val White elected as probate judge. Now, probate judge sits on the election commission. I believe the plan in 2012, because... Sheriff Burkhart wasn't going to run, but then when Scott and I put our paperwork in, our paperwork in, then he decided to run again. And I thought it was kind of odd that Jeremiah stepped down in 2010, and Bill Worley came over as the under sheriff. I think it's because they didn't want this information getting out. But Scott, who was angry at his brother at the time for not supporting him, and all of his brothers were, they were not happy with Jeremiah for what he did. Uh, their plan was to get Val White in as probate judge. And then after the election, after Burkhart won, he was going to step down and they were going to swear Bill Worley in, the undersheriff, as the sheriff. That would mean that he would come into the 2016 election cycle as the incumbent. Because I don't think that they thought that Bill Worley was electable. Now, the odd thing is right after that general election, when um, Val White did not get probate judge, the very next day, they moved Bill Worley to Hillsdale College as head of security. And Val White went to Branch County as an assistant prosecutor over there. So that was 2012. Going back to 2000, we know that Jeremiah J. Hodshire was an illegal undersheriff. There's all the evidence right there come all the way up through. Now, uh, I also found out that while in 2016, I ran against uh, uh, Tim Parker for sheriff, um, I was told that while Tim Parker was the training officer, Mark Hodshire, who was looking at his training records, saw that in his training records, it said uh, Mark Hodshire a.k.a. or also known as Jeremiah J. Hodshire. So he brought this up to Lieutenant Parker and said, why, why does this say this in my training record? And they tried to play it off. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Well, come to find out, it's because when the undersheriff has paperwork that has to go to the state, Remember, by statute, the undersheriff has to have a training number, has to have an M. Coles number, a certification number. And when the undersheriff files certain paperwork with the state, he has to put his certification number down. Well, remember, Jeremiah J. Hodshire didn't have an M. Coles number or a Malazzi number. And so he used his brother's number. That's fraud. And so... It's my belief, it's my understanding from talking with people, um, one of those people was Mark that told me this information. So we have a problem 
we have a problem in that sheriff's department and it's a long-standing problem. Sheriff Burkhardt didn't believe in the Constitution. He said the Constitution's for old people with white wigs. That's a problem. Your sheriff takes an oath to the Constitution, and his first duty is to protect the rights of the people. Well, those rights are found in that Constitution. And if that Constitution, if he doesn't believe in that Constitution he's taken a, an oath to, then how, how is it that he can protect the rights of the people? That's... That's a, that's a bit disturbing, right? Now, after all that, I took, I, I uh, made a complaint to the county board. Now, in 2013, 2013, at this point in time, the county board then has a meeting and they call Sheriff Burkhardt in. Sheriff Burkhardt goes, well, now, J.J. Hodshire wasn't, wasn't an undersheriff. He, he was an administrative assistant. No, he started out as an administrative assistant. And clearly, he adopted this paperwork here, making him an administrative assistant. Then the sheriff decides to pay him out of the undersheriff's budget line. And then in August of 2000, claims that he has all the requirements as, sheriff, as undersheriff, as approved by Stan Burkhart. And Stan Burkhart doesn't have the authority to do that. Only M. Coles does. So we got a problem. And in 2016, I ran against Tim Parker. Now, Tim Parker um, said a lot of horrible things about me. It's an election. It's politics. It's going to happen. Uh, and so Tim Parker becomes sheriff, and he doesn't finish his term out. Because if we remember, in July of 2018, or I'm sorry, was it uh, 2000? It was July of 2019. Tim Parker's undersheriff, who happened to be Carl Albright, who we knew was going to run for sheriff, um, forged the treasurer's name on some paperwork for a new car. Now, effectively, they've kept it, they kept it covered up. Now, it's my opinion that J.J. Hodshare knew about that when that happened in July. And he was afraid that the undersheriff, uh, undersheriff Albright, would be unelectable. At that point in time, he started repairing bridges with his brother with his brother Scott. And he needed to get Scott in there. And so in October of 2019, Scott called me and he said, you know, I'm calling just to see, you know, make sure, you know, I wanted to let you know I was running, but it's the cat's out of the bag now, you already know. Um, but I just wanted to call and make sure that we're going to have a clean campaign. I said, Scott, I ran against you in 2012. Did we have a clean campaign then? He goes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, okay, well, I'm not going to run any different than I did in 2012 or in 2016. I'm going to run the same way I did. So from my side, it'll be a clean campaign. Obviously, he didn't believe in the same thing. So uh, in 2012, when I ran against Scott, on Facebook, came up that his his mother, may she rest in peace, um, got on the Facebook and said that Scott wasn't qualified to be a sheriff and that I wasn't qualified to be a sheriff, only Burkhart was. Well, I find out from Scott later, and I've got the text messages to prove it. Scott said that JJ had his mother's uh, password, username and password for Facebook. And a lot of times he'd get on there pretending to be her. And he would make statements. And that's what, that's what J.J. would do. That's the type of politics that J.J. plays. And so he said a lot of horrible things about his brother. And that's what made him estranged from all of his brothers except for his mother. Um, but then in 2019, he buddies up and mends those bridges with his brother Scott. And he funds Scott's campaign. Now, Sheriff... Uh, Parker, after the primary and before 
um, well, before his time, his term was up in January, he stepped down. Now, Albright was his undersheriff. Albright had lost the primary. I'd lost the primary. Scott had won the primary. And Sheriff Parker stepped down. Now, by statute, by uh, 51.72, section 72, it says, if a vacancy occurs in the office of sheriff of a county, the undersheriff of the county shall in all things execute the office of sheriff until a sheriff is elected and qualified, which means sworn in in January, a default or misfeasance in office of an undersheriff in that capacity shall be considered to be a breach of the condition of the bond given on behalf of or by the sheriff who appointed the undersheriff. So that means, see, you're supposed to put a bond up so that you've got skin in the game, but we don't do that. We have an insurance policy and that becomes the bond. Well, th that means that nobody's got any skin in the game. So they can make as many mistakes as they want to. It doesn't cost them anything. It just costs the taxpayers doesn't cost them anything. They're supposed to have a bond. They're supposed to put their own money on the line. They're supposed to have skin in the game. That's how you pull their bond. That's how if they screw up, you can pull their bond. And if a bonding company won't bond them anymore, they become unelectable. See, this is how it's supposed to work. But we don't do that anymore. The taxpayers burden all of it, which is wrong. So anyway, a default or misfeasance in the office of an undersheriff in that capacity shall be considered to be a breach of the condition of the bond given on behalf of or by the sheriff who appointed the undersheriff and also a breach of the condition of the bond executed on behalf of or by the undersheriff to the sheriff by whom the undersheriff was appointed. So how is that supposed to work? Well, they swore Scott in prior to him being the sheriff. He became the interim sheriff before he became the sheriff. What was supposed to happen is when Sheriff Parker stepped down, under Sheriff Albright was supposed to step up as the sheriff. But Albright had already quit and moved to Jonesville. Both of them breached their bond. What was supposed to happen is when Sheriff Parker stepped down, Sheriff Albright was supposed to pick an undersheriff. He was supposed to step up into the office of sheriff and pick an undersheriff by statute. Then if he stepped down, then that undersheriff, whoever he picked as undersheriff, was supposed to step up as the interim sheriff until, the gen until whoever was picked in the general election could be sworn in in January. That didn't happen. Instead, they illegally swore in uh, Scott. Now, Marnie has a part to play in this. Marnie's supposed to know how the, all this is supposed to happen. It's her job as county clerk. They failed at that. She's failed at so many things. It's unbelievable. Failed at so many things. Stephanie Scott, who brought that out, that Marnie had failed at all those things. Uh, Marnie went to Secretary of State and made sure that Stephanie, a duly elected constitutional officer, was relieved of her duties in Adams Township of conducting elections. Because Stephanie had figured out that the elections aren't right in, in Hillsdale. And I had a recount in Jefferson Township. What didn't come out in the news is the poll book was off. That's supposed to be investigated. That poll book is signed under the penalty of perjury as being correct. The first envelope that was opened was 50% wrong. That didn't come out in the news. There were some real problems with that. In fact, the deputy clerk at the time, Judy Leedy, was she was hand wringing the whole time and going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And Marnie kept telling her, Judy, everything will be fine. Calm down, everything will be fine. I've got that all on video. By the way, I did record all of that. I recorded that whole recount. So I have evidence of a lot of this stuff right here. So this is what's been going on in your sheriff's department for a very long time. 
That's the history of it. And now you have Jeremiah J. Hodshire getting involved, wanting to be a precinct delegate. Never wanted to be before. Never showed up at any Republican Party meetings before. You have all your elected officials, never, very few of them ever, I mean ever, came to a Republican Party meeting. Now all of a sudden they all want to be involved. Hmm. Why is that? Why is that? Might be conspiracy theory, I don't know. But I believe that there's something buried in the records of Hillsdale County. I think a lot of them are right there at the Sheriff's Department. I think there's a bunch of elected officials that are worried that if I get in as sheriff, I may find things that have been covered up very well and hidden very well. It's just like Albright's forging Stephanie Kaiser's signature. They had that effectively covered up. But then at the fair, someone saw Stephanie and I talking on that Monday. And they went running back and said, hey, Stephanie's talking to Rutan. Saw them together. Now, Stephanie never said a word to me about any of this. I didn't know any about anything about this. But then Corey Murray uh, let me know that uh, Monday night, he got a call and said, be in my office tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. And that's when he went there and they broke the big story that Albright had done this, but they come up with a story. He did it to save the taxpayers thousands of dollars, which was a lie because the check for the cars were already signed and in his hand and already signed by Stephanie Kaiser. The paperwork he signed by the uh, uh, Treasury Department inspector said they didn't even need that paperwork. So why did he sign Stephanie's name to that paperwork? Then of course you had Brady that said, oh no, there was no crime because he didn't intend to a profit from it. It's not what the statute says. The statute says there are only two requirements. One or the other is required for the um, for the uh, crime of of uh, of forgery, and that's to either cause harm to the person that you that you forged their name, or to trick someone by forging that name. And obviously, he was trying to trick. Ford Motor Corporation into believing that the treasurer had signed that paperwork. That's really all that was required. Now, don't get me wrong. Again, no one's 100% bad. Nobody's 100% good. And Carl Albright's been a good officer for most of his life. He's done a lot of good things. I'm not going to take any of that away, anything away from him on that. Did he do something, in my estimation, pretty stupid? Yeah, but we also do stupid things. But then again, we all are required to be responsible for our acts, each individual act that we do, whether it's good or whether it's bad. We deserve praise when it's good. Rights come with responsibilities. We have to be responsible for what we do. It's just like, I don't think any of these people are inherently bad people. I think they've done some bad things and I think they've done everything they can to not be responsible for those bad things. And I think it's time for a change in Hillsdale. I think it's time that we get new guards in place. Just like the Declaration of Independence tells us that we have the ability to do, put new guards in their place that are going to protect our life, liberty, and property. It's never been more important than ever before especially with a Democrat legislature, a Democrat governor, Democrat Senate. We got Joe Bellino that are, that's voting with the Democrats. He might as well be a Democrat. And they're putting lots of legislation on the floor, taking your God-given rights. Remember, let's not forget the words, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, driving their just power from the consent of the governed. 
Those are important words. That's the keystone principles of the founding of this nation. Keystone principles. That if my rights are given by God, they can only be taken by God. But yet you've got a Democrat legislature that's trying to restrict your First Amendment right, your Second Amendment right. Pretty soon, We've already seen in January 6th where they've restricted people's Fifth Amendment rights and Sixth Amendment rights and Fourth Amendment rights. How many rights are you willing to give up? See, the only protection you have is a county sheriff, a county sheriff that believes in the Constitution, understands the very principles of it, understands the history of it, understands his ancient power and has the courage to stand up against overreaching federal, state, and local government to protect the rights of the people. That's his first job. He doesn't answer to a governor. He doesn't answer to anyone but the people. So there's the history. That's what's going on. And this has been the seventh episode of Self-Evident Truth with me, the Grumpy Old Vet. Have a great day.